beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Now listen, the realm of the spirit is a realm that works with very definite spiritual laws. Hallelujah. Everybody says spiritual laws. The realm of the spirit does not leave any chance to guesswork and the initiating of anything by man's or from man's opinion. There are exact spiritual laws that must be followed through for any process to be achieved in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. I just read two powerful spiritual laws. The first was in Ezekiel 18. The Bible says the soul that sinneth, any soul at all, is a law. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. In other words, the price, the penalty... The price tag that was put upon any life that sins is death. This is according to the justice of God. This is according to the laws, the irrefutable laws of the spirit. Everyone said the soul that sinneth, it shall die. It's not subject to begging, not subject to negotiation. Any soul that sins, that law catches up with the person immediately. Hallelujah. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Gender irrespective. Age irrespective. Hallelujah. And then the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 9, how that without the shedding of blood, in other words, there is another law in the spirit that if peradventure there is any chance to help that sinner, it must be with the shedding of blood. Hallelujah. Please follow me. Two very important laws. The first law is what? The soul that sins, it shall die. That means every time you are a sinner, there is a hand of justice upon you for as long as you are still alive. A hand of justice that keeps crying for that law to be at work in your life are you following me now the bible says the soul that sins white sin black sin doesn't matter the soul that sins it shall die then hebrews chapter 9 tells us that if that issue of sin will ever be dealt with whoever will want to deal with that sin must initiate a process of the shedding of blood not the donation the shedding of blood that means the bible tells us that that justice is irrefutable the only chance for it to be 
considered and reversed is when there is a shedding of blood. Hallelujah. So what is it about blood? Not the blood of Jesus now. What is it about blood that is so powerful that even in death it is able to initiate a negotiation? What is it about death? About blood? The blood of anything, just blood. Hallelujah. Occultist, every religion I know, this is the common ground for every religion. They respect blood and they have something to do with blood. Hallelujah. Right from the Garden of Eden, we begin to see how that when man fell, God himself stripped a lamb, a bloody lamb, and used it to cover Adam and Eve. Right from the Garden of Eden, there was the shedding of blood. And then all through the Old Testament, we see the shedding of the blood of bulls. But the question I have is, what is it about blood that makes it effective? Why not flesh? Why not water? Is it the color of the blood? Is blood anything that is just red in a human body? Is it the reddish color that gives it power? Because many people know that the blood saves. But we do not know what is it in the blood that is so powerful that even Satan and death, the last enemy to be destroyed, can respect it. Hallelujah. All through scripture, we see that every time blood was shed, there was an invisible force that stopped men from doing whatever they wanted to do. Kings in ancient times would slaughter their children and allow the blood to spill on the earth and at once it will end the war no matter how angry the enemies were. What is it about the blood? Not the blood of Jesus, just blood. Hallelujah. Is it the color of the blood? Or is it that the blood is liquid? So if I inject somebody now and a blue substance come out, do we call that blood? Is it the color that makes it bloody? Because you see, the reason why the church has not been able to access the power of the blood is because we have been taught that the blood is powerful. But the truth is we have not been given a revelation of what makes it powerful. What makes the blood powerful? Is it because it was Jesus that shed it? How about the ones of bulls and goats? How about the, one of, the ones of children that native doctors shed and they enter a city and kill people and no man can stop it? How about that one? King of kings, Lord of lords, you are faithful and true lamb of god i worship you i took a little study to find out what is it from from a medical and a historical perspective what is it about blood that makes demons tremble what is it about blood that makes demons hungry for blood. How many of you have heard that thing that demons and occultists and some people living in the village drink blood? There are many of us who come from places where every year they make sacrifices. And frankly speaking, they are not as concerned about the flesh, that blood. When the priest sees the blood in a calabash, he starts smiling. What does it do to him? What is the revelation? If you understand this, I'm telling you, you will walk out of certain chains this night. Just like that. It is not the color of blood that makes it powerful. It's not the color. Even if God suddenly made a pronouncement now that blood changed to blue, it will not suddenly make blood more powerful. Hallelujah. So what is it about blood that makes it powerful? Watch this. Goodness. When somebody, listen, when somebody is almost dying in the hospital, the doctors just run and they take pints of blood. Is that true? And they now begin to inject blood 
in the person all of a sudden strength returns what did the blood do couldn't they have put water and just say oh god drink one, one gallon of water let's see how far it goes what is it about the blood hallelujah shoot a gun at a man if blood does not come out a possibility exists that he may be able to survive but let blood begin to come out and suddenly you see the man start getting weak and then he collapses in spite of his skeletal structure in spite of the brain that is at work just one component leaving his body and the man dies what is the power of blood what is this mystery hallelujah that makes blood so powerful to an extent that when Cain killed Abel the Bible says although Abel was dead is that true the blood was speaking so question was it the blood that was Abel <laughs> I kept searching because I needed to find out you see the way my mind operates my mind operates like a machine I don't just receive things that are haphazard I need to be convinced that these things work hallelujah my mind works like a machine you don't just tell me okay this and that just believe it just like that no no I want to understand the working component of that process what makes it work hallelujah when you meet a native doctor and you tell him something is wrong this and that the Baba just laughs and said these are the requirements bring a goat right now you bring the goat and the man slaughters the goat and they ensure that the blood is drained in a calabash as soon as the blood is drained in a calabash things begin to happen all kinds of satanic things we keep singing songs there is power in the blood question if it was not Jesus that died would there still be power in blood because before Jesus died blood had been shed and we see that it carried some mighty degree of power for instance the Bible tells us how that when um, the sons of Saul remember they were required that they had to be slain for peace to return in Israel the Bible says Saul gave his seven sons and they slayed all the seven sons and God himself didn't stop it the enemy slayed seven sons when their blood touched the earth at once there was peace hallelujah what is this factor in blood that makes it powerful leviticals please truly there is power in the blood of jesus really there's power in any blood even your own it's just that the blood of jesus is all powerful levitical 17 verse 11a just the a part levitical 17 Let's just read the whole of the verse 11 17 11 are you there one to read just stop there for a while read it again the life of any flesh is resident where in the brain in the heart where in the bones he said the life of any flesh is found there's no time for me to begin to give you i i just prayed that i would be able to do just do a little teaching so that we can have time to do what we are doing tonight i wish there was time to show you the things i found out about 
these scriptures that I'm sharing with you, it will blow your mind and open you up to another dimension. I hope that God grants us grace to do a teaching or a series in this place. But he said, the life of the flesh is where? Ah. So it begins to give us an idea of what the big deal is about blood. Did he say the blood of Jesus? He said it's in where? The life of any living creature is resident in his blood. Are you seeing what makes blood powerful? So, blood is not powerful because of the color. Blood is not powerful because it is liquid. Blood is powerful because the life of whatever that blood came from is resident in that blood. So, every time we talk about shedding of blood, we are really talking about giving up life. Are you getting my point? That was why in the Old Testament, a curse was put on whoever eats blood because as far as god was concerned it was the same thing as eating a human being are you getting the revelation now the life of the flesh is in the blood in other words as i'm standing right now if you create a process and begin to drain the blood out of me without any replenishment i will stand right here and die right here is that true because the life of this flesh, this body, is in the blood. Hallelujah. So the life of a goat is where? The life of a human being is where? The life of a chicken is where? Are you seeing that now? So your blood represents your life. Are you getting me? If you want to know your worth, hold your blood in a calabash and this is all your worth throw it on the ground and you are gone you get the point so the entire thing about sacrifices and the mosaic law and everything it was about using life to cover are you getting my point now for something that someone had done in accordance with the law we just shared in, we shared in Hebrews chapter 9. Are you getting me? It says without the shedding of what? There is no remission of. In other words, without the shedding of life. Correct? For every time somebody sins, the law is either that person or whoever can volunteer on his behalf must be able to shed his life. The moment he sheds his life, that sin has been lifted waiting for another sin to be committed you get my point if another one is committed another volunteer is required that's how the law works so every time you sin the law begins to catch up with you and satan listen to me satan did not create the law hello that law was part of god's justice system it was not created by god as Satan began to explore, I hope you know Satan was in charge of justice, not just worship alone. So as Satan began to search the archives of God's justice, he found out that there was a provision there that any soul that sins, it shall die. Are you getting my point? And that for anyone to die or for that sin to be forgiven, there had to be remission of sin. So when Adam came, what did satan try to get man to do to sin because he understood the law satan wanted man to die and he said i remember that law let me make god himself walk against his law and he led man to sin are you getting me now because he never knew that there was a possibility for god to become man so he knew that there would not be any ransom are you getting my point now and listen because the bible tells us that there are many kinds of bodies is that true there are terrestrial that means there are different levels and qualities of life are you getting me so the gravity of your offense determines the class of the life that will be shared that's why a herbalist can look and say no this condition is easy just bring a chicken based on our incantation a chicken is within the range of life that can atone for this when you look at one you say this is more than chicken go and bring goat 
there's one that he will even say no bring a man there is one that you say no not just a man a pure child whose blood has not been defiled are you getting me those are acute spiritual conditions that require certain or they say some virgins you see ancient kings in those days they would bring their daughters and they had to be virgins in other words not touched by any man and then they would they would make the sacrifice bury them alive and use the blood to do certain things and it worked it worked because it was a law listen let me share with you a revelation i hope that all of us can sustain the spiritual maturity to take this listen did you know that thank god we did not come from all of these heterogeneous religions in the world most of us were christians and maybe a few of us were from other religions who just came but when you study other world's religion all right you will find out that most of these religions actually thrive on spiritual laws that god created are you getting me when you study the content of their operation and the reason why although these are perverse religions they seem to have results it is because they are manipulating spiritual laws are you getting my point now but the reason why they got those laws was when the fallen angels came they began to teach men some things that they should not teach them you think the women just gave themselves to those angels when they came they started saying there is a secret i want to show you something all that god told you is not all that there is the holy ghost was supposed to be the one to teach us this but now this wicked spirit started teaching man to know so that he can use it to destroy another man are you getting my point now so they started teaching men how that you can make incantations and invoke the spirit of another it is not like it is the invocation please don't misunderstand me it is not that it is the invocation that was initiated by satan but the power and the knowledge that sponsors that spiritual operation is demonic are you getting my point now that's why a herbalist can pray for a man and the person will be healed are you getting my point what is wrong with that process is it the healing the healing is wrong because it was not initiated by the spirit although the man is healthy the glory does not go to god are you getting my point so in the kingdom the means also matters just as the end I, is somebody understanding what i'm saying otherwise we have no right to criticize somebody who uses voodoo or yoga to ease somebody else of stress are you getting my point people do it in films and the rest and they use these voodoo incantations and they get people who are not pregnant pregnant they do a lot of things so what is wrong with that everything is wrong with that because although it is a manipulation of spiritual laws but it was initiated and sponsored by darkness god designed the kingdom such that god must be the initiator the sustainer of every spiritual process so it's not an issue of whether the process was spiritual or not are you getting my point if it was not initiated by god and sustained by god it is of the devil even if it produces the results you expected it to produce what that means is if i kill a small child and use the blood to take to a herbalist and in one month i become a billionaire did i really become a billionaire yes did real money come to me yes so am i righteous for doing that no am i going to hell for doing that of course a correct process can i help charity with the money yes can you bring the money and sow it in church many people are doing it does it make it right no why because the spirit of god or the word of god the character of the kingdom did not initiate and sustain that process are you understanding what i'm teaching tonight let me give you a little example i'm already doing sign of the cross so that some of you will not stone me how many of you believe that man was made from the earth the bible says it right adam dust now what that means is the components of the earth were the raw materials that were used to create man 
Is that true? How many of us agree? Man was made from dust. Is that true? I want to share with you a few spiritual secrets. Did you know that the hair of man was made from grass? When I teach you, I will share with you the principle of reflection. We call this in theology the principle of reflection. How that things just like the moon does not have life on its own. It reflects the glory of the sun. That means if you want to see what the moon is, there is something it was made in its similitude. So the Bible says man was created in the similitude of the earth in an attempt to communicate something. Are you getting my point? You look at the similitude of your hair and the grass that grows. You can barb it, you can mow it. The eyes of man was made from water. This is how the harbor is. That's why they can go to the river. Is that true? And do incantation and the river will suddenly become eyes. They will begin to see from it. It's in your Bible. How did they invoke the spirit of Samuel? That's why I started by repenting. Should I share a few more? Listen, don't carry this tomorrow in your small fellowship and say, I have a word from the Lord. He opened my eyes yesterday and there's something I must share with you. How many of you know that your head don't carry misguided revelations you cannot prove? When they sit you down and begin to ask you to prove, I make sure I can prove what I say before I say, I'm just trying to hurry up. Praise God. I hope that we'll get to do Bible study. The teeth and the bones of men were made from rocks. The principle of reflection. Hallelujah. That's why after your body is long decayed like the rocks, your teeth and your skeletal system still remains. Hallelujah. The veins of man was made from the roots of plants. See the way the roots work. How, is it not them that supply nutrients? This is called the principle of reflection. Some of you are looking at me. What, the Bible gives you a clue. Is that true? It tells you that Adam was made from the components of the earth. Not just dust. That means the material of his physical creation were components of the earth. This is the principle that witches and wizards take advantage of. So when they want to see something, someone stole in your house and your parents who are idol worshippers say, let's go to Baba's place. He just says, bring me a calabash. Is that true? And then they go to a riverside. All of a sudden, the man says, it was on Tuesday, two o'clock. This is what many prophets are using today. Are you seeing? manipulation of spiritual laws that were not initiated and sustained by the spirit but they are in their spiritual laws hallelujah listen the reason why hear me the reason why man can survive in this system are you getting my point was because part of the tools that were used to create his physical body were compliant to the system he is living in. Are you getting my point? That's why when you are sick, the plants can still heal you. Is that not true? Doctors use what? Is it not processed herbs? Native doctors use what? No, not just herbs. Herbs plus power from the underworld. Is that true? So whether through medicine or through whatever, the supernatural is at work there. Because the doctor gives you chloroquine, the remaining is a system that they cannot explain. You don't swallow drugs and look at the drugs and say, Panadol, go to my head. Make sure you don't dodge to the leg. Do you say that? You just do what? And the Panadol, configured within itself, knows that as busy as your body is, it should find its way to your head. That's the same way a microorganism that you call unicellular. How many of you did complexity in biology? And you were taught that um, unicellular organisms have the least complexity. Is that true? Yet, a 
and a waterborne disease can enter your body a unicellular cell but it can know that is your heart it should go and attach itself to yet we call them unicellular and it enters your body it sees your eye it just jumps it say i'm not for the eye where is the heart it has never it was not there when the human heart was created yet it can find its way and know that this is the heart and stay there and know that there are white blood cells and other platelets and the rest coming in the body and it stops and begins to paralyze your immunity yet we call it unicellular so could it be that, that, that there is a lie somewhere in this story write what they taught you write what they taught you hallelujah what is it about blood that makes it powerful blood is a representation of the life of whatever organism produced that blood and it's also a representation of the quality of life not just the life but the quality the levels so the bible says the soul that seen it it shall die the soul that seen it, it shall die. If Joshua Selman seen it, according to the law of God, he must die. Are you getting my point? If Abiodu sins, according to the law of God, he must die. If this little baby sins, according to the law of God's justice, he must die. So Satan said, I'm aware of this law. Let's take that law to the Garden of Eden. And when he used it and man fell, Satan was excited. Do you know he was excited? Because he knew that man was doomed to die. I've said it again and again. I hope you know that Adam was not deceived. There's no time I would have shown you from the Bible. A lot of people keep blaming ladies and say, you people, wicked people, you spoiled our generation. There's nothing like that. Listen, it was for the love that man had for the woman. Listen, do you know what it means to fall short of God's glory? It doesn't mean to backslide. It's to reduce yourself to a spiritual strata where you cannot become in the class of God again. Are you getting my point? That's what happened to Eve when she ate. Adam was still standing, but there was no relationship. And he took the tree and joined her. The Bible clearly says Adam was not deceived. Ladies, I bring you deliverance in Jesus' name. Any man that falls should hold himself responsible. Love took you there. Love is still taking men to do all kinds of things today. Where did the saying, I will die for you, come? From Adam? From a lot of zealous lovers around who may not understand the implication of what they are saying. They didn't even run for you. Talk more of dying for you. Let's continue. Praise the Lord. The soul that sins, it shall die. So, let me hurry up with the story. It was inevitable for the blood of bulls and goats to atone. Why was it why was it not possible for complete atonement you know what atonement is let me define it for you very quickly please write that word down to make atonement is to satisfy someone or something for an offense committed to satisfy someone or something for an offense committed by paying a price so you atone uh, by by satisfying somebody or something that was offended by paying the price the legal terminology is bail when you go and pay some amount so that someone who was declared guilty can come out of a prison cell hallelujah so every time you talk about blood the first function of blood 
is to atone for justice or judgment that is speaking somewhere. Are you getting my point? If it is true that life works on a legal ground, whenever you talk about blood, we talk about mercy, but uh -uh, you will not understand it just by talking about mercy. You have to know that justice necessitated the coming of that blood. The mercy there is to the one who could not help himself, who committed the offense. Are you understanding what I'm saying now? So when man fell, they tried the blood of bulls, but the quality and the longevity, listen, another spiritual law, another spiritual law that was given Moses was that when the lamb was to be slain, all right, the age of the lamb mattered. Are you getting me? The atonement a day in the Hebrew called Yom Kippur, it was once in a year. Are you getting my point now? It was called the day of atonement. Once in a year, when the priest would come in with the blood of a lamb in the most holy place to atone for the sins of the Israelites. And it so happened, listen, that the atonement, the validity of the atonement was what? One year. Are you getting my point? And if that were to continue, then every year, the priest would keep atoning. So now Jesus shows up. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. When Jesus showed up after 30 years, he began to carry out his ministry. Did very mighty things. Now, I need you to know that the kind of birth that happened to Jesus was one of the reasons that qualified him to be able to use his blood. Are you getting me? How many, well, I hope that you know, if you don't know, know it now, that the blood in the child comes from the man. Is that true? Medically proven. The woman is just the one that holds the child, but the blood of the child comes from the man, not the woman. Hence, it was a possibility for Mary to take Jesus without the nature of man corrupting him. The very cell that fertilized Mary's egg was the life, so way, the life of God. That's why the Holy Ghost himself played the fatherly role of Jesus. Are you getting me? Joseph wanted to marry Jesus. God said, oh God, you wait to... You are going to wait. Just be patient for one year. Because something needs to happen here without your involvement. You are a man. You are a victim. You are part of those that need to be saved. There is a voice of judgment speaking. The Bible says by one man, sin came. And then through reproduction, other people came into that covenant. Are you getting my point now? So every baby that was born, even if the baby had never committed any act of sin, that voice of judgment began to speak from birth. Because all have sinned and fallen short as a result of that sin of the glory of God. How many? All have sinned and fallen short of that glory. Jews, Gentiles. Don't let anybody make you look like your state is the worst. When they say this is your state now, I will say all have sinned. How many? Is that not a powerful revelation? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now Jesus came. Please watch this. Mary just agreed with the Holy Spirit. And he was born. The Bible says the power of the highest shall what? Overshadow you. All of a sudden her stomach started protruding. Like a woman who was pregnant. Now watch this. Mary had not been defiled by a man and then the cell of a man was not in her womb. So Jesus grew and came out. Are you getting my point? Watch this. Principalities and powers, they knew, listen, they knew what happened. That's why if you are born again like Jesus, you must be born of the Spirit. Are you getting my point? Jesus was born of the spirit. Is that true? If you are to be really born again, then you must be born of the spirit. 
So Jesus came and he, he disguised himself because the Holy Ghost had not come to identify him. So when through all of the constellations and the operations of certain spiritual laws, the Herod and his wise men and all the people, they knew that another king had been done had been born the spirit of the antichrist began to move them to look for jesus and kill him are you getting my point so they killed all the children and herod believed that jesus was one of all those children that were killed so he piped down until he died and then the angel told joseph he said you can go now they that seek the life of the child have, have, have died jesus walked for 30 years he kept doing a lot of things nobody knew but listen, Satan had been studying what was happening in history. Are you getting me? So when John, because a prophecy was left in the Garden of Eden. He says, Satan, you think you have done your worst, but the seed of the woman shall bruise your head. So Satan got scared because he knew that God does not just talk nonsense. Before God speaks, he has made the... So he started seeing and Satan knew that nothing happens on earth until he's prophesied. So he started chasing every prophet and everybody to hear what they will say. And then Isaiah said, who had believed our report? He started confusing Satan. What is all this? That's why the prophets use coded languages. They said, he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. He was bruised for iniquities. And hell was saying, who is this? Is this Isaiah? So it kept on like that. When John was born, Satan was almost sure because he was the last prophet before jesus that's why the spirit of the antichrist moved the pharisees to ask john are you that one that should come so that they can kill him fast and then john they said are you elias john said nay are you this he said nay and the thing frustrated satan he said who are you he said i'm the voice of one crying he said what kind of god it was a coded language hallelujah and then a time came when jesus would no longer hide it he came while john was being trained in the wilderness are you getting me god gave him a signal he said whoever you see the dove come upon no as a sign i've said it again john was not a baptist his baptizing was to help him identify jesus that was why after the baptism of jesus he stopped baptizing John was a prophet. John was a prophet. He started baptizing. And then when he saw Jesus, he looked. He looked with his prophetic eyes. He said, behold the lamb. I found you. The scribes were just standing dumbfounded. And then he said, no, I am not worthy. Because the information that was given to me in the secret place about you i cannot be the one to baptize you jesus said we are still working something suffer it to be so because i'm coming on a legal ground so everything must be done somebody must lay hands on me suffer it to be so that the scripture not that i will be lord that the scripture should be fulfilled so that when jesus dies there will be no law that satan can take to god and say based on this it was not followed so jesus had to follow the process are you getting my point now and then finally the holy ghost descended upon him and god said all right it's no secret again this is that beloved son the moment he announced it satan told all the demons what are you waiting for oh yeah that was why they started looking for jesus to kill him immediately immediately they started looking for jesus to kill him hallelujah and then he told them he said let me give you another mystery my time has not come in other words don't you think i'm afraid of death i came to do a lot of things death is part of it because my life must go and if my life listen the life of god came into blood so that it can be shed are you getting my point since the life of every flesh is in the blood god's own life concealed itself in the blood of jesus i pray that you will understand what i'm sharing i'm getting to the crux of this message please bring the communion and something 
mighty will happen in this place like hallelujah so Jesus was walking with the blood of God are you getting my point the life of a flesh is in the blood so this was the life of God it was going to be transferred into man but Satan did not know that was why every time they looked the demon said ah is this not the son of God and Jesus said keep quiet this is a hidden thing when it was time for him to give up himself something happened hallelujah something very very remarkable happened please follow me Jesus now said this is the hour of darkness and he sat with the disciples at table watch this a powerful covenant was going to take place Jesus said guys it's time for you to eat bread and take wine and the disciples said we've been hungry we can't wait Jesus said hold on something is happening here you do not know in John when you read from verse 6 down to 8 Jesus began to speak and he shared another spiritual mystery that it is possible to come into a man by eating his flesh and his blood hold on what is the mystery of marriage what is the mystery of marriage two people come my dear when you understand this you will know how it is possible for us to come into Christ hallelujah watch this this is a lady on her own I'm someone on my own we come together and by a divine pronouncement is that true a divine pronouncement they say we are husband and wife we have become one flesh all right then when a man sleeps with his wife they now give birth to one entity that is a combination of both of them is the culmination of their oneness so the child that is born is the ultimate demonstration that the man and the woman are truly one is that true help me is it true so Jesus listen Jesus who serves as the second Adam now sits with his Eve the bride and that was a wedding matrimony that was going to go on there but they did not understand listen to me the church is called the bride of Christ Jesus is called the second Adam just like the first Adam was betrothed to what his wife so jesus is about to be betrothed to his bride are you getting the revelation but the people did not understand and it was 12 only 12 of them because 12 is the prophetic number for government and the government represent the people are you understanding this now so jesus sits at table and he takes up the cup Praise the Lord. Watch this. He already told them in John. He said, if there is a possibility for you to eat my flesh, drink my blood, you can have my life. And what was his life? The life of God. Look at the spiritual laws that were being obeyed to transfer the life of God into the life of man. Are you getting the point? It had to be done on legal, on legal grounds. And he said, this, just like a priest announces, I now declare you husband and wife. Jesus standing as the high priest said, this is my cup of the new covenant that I am now entering with you. Drink this as often as you can. Are you getting me now? And he broke the bread. He said, take my body, my body that is given for you. And when they took it and they ate it, Jesus laughed because they had now satisfied the spiritual law that can permit the world to come into the man. So, I, I'm, please permit me to use a word that may sound vulgar. It's like a man sleeping with his wife to give birth to a baby. That's what we call the passion of the Christ. Are you getting my point? The church in Christ going to the cross to birth a new seed
How do I communicate this? Oh Lord, help me. All the while, Satan did not know this. And Satan kept moving the people. Kill Jesus. Notice, Jesus refused to die. Because if he just died like that, it would be a waste. Man was not involved. Just like a, a woman cannot sleep with herself or a man sleep with himself. They need two of them to produce that child. Are you getting my point? So the communion was necessary for crucifixion to make sense and the shedding of blood to make sense. Are you getting what I'm saying? The only way I see one or two small children here. If not, I would have used the mystery of marriage to explain to you what really happened. But let's, God will grant us grace. You are understanding in Jesus' name. That's why marriage is a serious thing to God. Because it was the principle that was used to redeem man. Are you getting my point? So Jesus, immediately after the communion, now he had the legal right to become sin. Are you getting my point? Then he went to Gethsemane. When he went to Gethsemane, look at immediately after the communion, he went to Gethsemane and he started crying. Why was he crying? I will tell you why he was crying. He was crying because now, on legal basis, he needed to become the second Adam. How did the first Adam become a fallen man? The Holy Spirit left him. So at the Garden of Eden, I mean at Gethsemane, just like the Garden of Eden, are you seeing now? They were all gardens. The Holy Ghost had to leave Jesus. That was why Jesus was crying. He said, is there a possibility? The psalmist knew this and he was speaking. He said, take not your Holy Spirit from me. It was a prophetic statement. He said, cast me not away from your presence. He was not singing a song. He said, take not your Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit was taken from Jesus. At that point, he fully became man seen able to take the nature of man and from there they caught him and he looked helpless he could not do anything the prophecy of isaiah 53 begins it says who has believed our report in other words if we explain this to men will they believe that god disguised himself became a man he said who had believed our report that whoever believes that report the arm of the lord will be shown to him that's salvation he said who has believed that report hallelujah so jesus went to the cross now all the things that happened to jesus was very important a crown of thorn was put on his head because man lost dominion and the symbol of dominion is the crown of the king so everything that happened from there was the exchange everybody say the exchange so everything we were not christ became so that we will become what he is you get the revelation so they put the crown of thorns on his head they didn't even know what they were doing and he kept quiet when they started flogging him when they started flogging him it was very very although he was in pains but it was the fulfillment of isaiah's prophecy watch this when they were flogging him what started coming out everybody what started coming out and i told you that every time blood is shed the issue of death begins to be negotiated because without the shedding of blood there is no what remission of sins that means there is no pardoning from death the moment the blood of jesus started touching the earth from which man was created it was a mystery and they were flogging jesus christ tearing his flesh the Bible says he shall see the travail of his soul. Because man did not offend Satan. Man offended God. Are you getting me? So according to the justice of God, either man or somebody else must be punished to the degree of that offense for God to be appeased. If I steal your laptop and they catch me and they say I'm going to spend 10 days in the prison, that punishment comforts you it's a reward for that stealing so the bible says god will see the travail of whoever that scapegoat is and a time will come when it will satisfy his heart for the offense of man then justice would have had its cause 
Are you getting me? So Satan made them to be beating Jesus Christ. And they did not know. They led him to the cross. It was a tree that made man fall. It would be a tree that would redeem man. And so they went to the cross. And when they hung there, watch this. Jesus looked at them. And when he looked at them, watch a mystery that happened at the cross. Do you know, I told you that the passion of the Christ can be likened to intercourse between a man and a woman to produce a child. I'll prove it to you. Do you notice that at the cross, like the climax of that intercourse, who was there? The mother of Jesus. Where was the father? Because we were going to be born of the spirit. The mother of Jesus was there. Are you getting my point? And then John was standing there. Is that true? And he was called John the beloved. Jesus said, you people are mourning. You don't know what you represent here. He said, mother, behold what? Your son. And son, behold the woman that gave birth to you. It was a coded language. Because women are gates in the spirit. The only gates through which another life can pass. Hallelujah. And when Jesus hung on that cross. While his blood was dripping. In the realm of the spirit. The blood was not just falling everywhere. The blood was falling in a specific container. It was the life. Zoe was just giving way please listen very very important and jesus hung not as the christ but jesus who had become seen jesus the career of joshua selman's sin jesus the career of maman's sin jesus the car are you getting my point now on that cross that was what paul saw he said i have been crucified with christ what did paul see hallelujah and now jesus looked up and he said it is finished what was he seeing at what point did he know that it was finished and then he died i've taught it again and again when sinners die where do they go to so jesus died sin not just a sinner so where would he go to he couldn't have gone to heaven because the spirit of adoption that seals men was not on him and he went there was joy in hell all kinds of joy unspeakable all of a sudden jesus shows up in hell hallelujah and i hope you know well we'll talk about that the compartment of hell called hades the place of the dead I know there have been a lot of debates about that. I won't go into that. But the saints of all were there. In First Peter, the Bible tells us that Jesus went there, preached the gospel to them. Is that true? <laughs> when Jesus went, Satan looked and that was when he knew that this was Adam coming to collect back the keys. The second Adam. The first Adam was there. He was part of all the people together with Father Abraham and the rest. The place of the dead and jesus the bible says all the cohorts of hell were on him they were trying to stop him when god saw the travail of his soul and justice was made listen very powerful the bible says jesus shook them making a public show of them all this drama happened in hell oh. and immediately that happened he went to satan satan himself and said give me the keys adam gave you in the garden of eden give it to me you see that and yeah that's what happened revelation chapter one i am he that was dead but now it's alive and i hold the keys where did he get it he got it in hell give that keys of dominion that gave you access over the earth because until jesus died and collected it satan was the god of this system legally what adam should have been that's why satan took jesus and said come he took him to a mountain and showed him the riches. Jesus never argued with Satan because he was not lying. Satan oh, dragged Jesus to a mountain. He said, come. 
all these glories i will give it to you satan said because it has been given to me he was mocking jesus adam gave it to me and jesus said no problem it's a matter of time i will strip you of it when he collected it watch this he went to the prison isaiah 61 to open the prison gates to those who are bound you see what the prophet was saying he opened that prison and abraham and the rest they joined him and when he resurrected the bible says graves were open whose graves is it not in your bible graves were open and the saints of old came out they walked in the streets they knew them they knew them let me prove to you they knew them at the transfiguration of jesus when elijah and moses appeared what did peter say he said wow thank god we are here let us make three tents one for you one for moses one for elijah who told him hallelujah jesus resurrected came back into this realm and he was about to finish the sacrifice as the high priest so when mary wanted to touch him she said rabboni said no don't touch me i paid so much price to make sure that i get this blood and right now i'm going to the heavenly tabernacle the book of hebrews so jesus enters he was both the lamb and the high priest and i told you there is a law that the age of the lamb determine the validity of the atonement so the blood of god which is the life of god who is the ancient of days the ageless one that blood was drained and when jesus went to heaven he poured it upon the heavenly tabernacle the moment that happened he came down he said guys touch me touch any part you want to touch it no longer can defile me the transaction has been done this was the revelation paul saw and said wow had they known this they would not have crucified the lord of glory so satan was part of those who acted the movie to make sure man was saved that's why every time you mention the blood it reminds him of his foolishness every time you mention the blood it reminds him that the price had been paid and that he was part of those who ensured that the price was paid hallelujah watch this i'm about to round up when they touched him jesus said all hail he said all authority in the heavens and in the earth has been given unto me and he began to teach them a lot of things these were the mysteries that he was teaching them for 40 days in acts chapter 1 before he finally did the bible says he was with them a period of 40 days teaching them on the matters of the kingdom he was sharing this thing with them and paul now telling the hebrew church he said let us therefore the blood somebody has paid the price with his life every time you say blood of jesus with revelation what you are saying is whatever will stop me from entering this let the life of god give me access to step in are you seeing that now so if the traditional rulers in your village and so on and so forth they have been sacrificing before you were born and they believe they can lay claims and you come in through the blood suddenly the price of the blood opens the gate and he say walk out you are free you can shout blood of jesus and remain in captivity because there is no knowledge and because there is no revelation or you have not known how to activate that which christ has done so i come from a place with witchcraft for instance i come from a place with killing and all of a sudden i realize that this blood was shed for me and i stand and in the name of the lord jesus christ i begin to speak the moment i say blood of jesus because demons are not like men they don't have short memory it's as clear as yesterday before them what jesus did and so when i begin to plead the blood what i mean is i begin to call the price that was paid for my freedom just like somebody wants to harass you and you say is this not my receipt did i not pay school fees was it not complete 
what then is the accusation and the bible says every time we take of the bread which is a type of his body listen and we take of the cup which is a type of his blood we are not just satisfying hunger but we are re-enacting a revelation the same way people offer sacrifices again to remind the gods that we are still loyal over this land it still belongs to you even after 100 years gods you are still the ones in charge every time we take this we are not only speaking to god but we are speaking to the gates of hell and we are saying we are still one with christ and this is the proof we are eating of his body we are drinking of his blood that means we have access to his life because the life of that flesh is in the blood and when we take it that life becomes part of our inheritance and then it can open the doors of sickness it can open every kind of legal door the blood the life of god watch this although this is ordinary zobo or drink or whatever and this is ordinary wafers but by faith the same way the holy ghost made the word become flesh the holy ghost can make the flesh become the word hallelujah so the holy ghost takes this flesh and changes it into a literal spiritual substance that the moment you take this is not just going to your stomach because the bible says the body which is the word is able to go beyond your bones and marrows and to the joints and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart it can purify a man's conscience so when blood is crying against you and saying are you supposed to succeed in life are you not supposed to be a victim and the devil says were you not part of those drinking and smoking you say yes and the moment he wants to execute that judgment the blood comes in between you and jesus says how about this how about the price how about the price that was paid and so satan wants to work another formula and that formula is ignorance so although the price has been has been paid he comes to many believers and convinces them that the price has not been paid or the principle to activate that reality in their lives there are people right now who will look at this communion and just think it's a ritual that's why the bible said be careful when you take the communion if your heart is not truly committed to god and you take the communion the bible says for this purpose some are weak and some even do sleep that means taking the communion in a way that mocks god can kill a man the same way it can give life tonight the life of god is in that blood of jesus that was shed and as we take this prophetically and symbolically i want you to know that mighty things will happen in this place that's why i gave you revelations many of you as you take this communion imagine yourself standing at the gates of your families and looking at the assaults of the devil and as you lift up this communion you say lord behold this is the evidence that i should walk out of this age-long thing this is the evidence this is my evidence this is my school fees when satan says after all you committed an abortion you say satan is not a lie but this is the evidence the speaking blood that speaks mercy that judges every other voice when the devil looks and says you will remain barren did they not covenant your family you lift it and say this is my evidence the body and the bread this is a sign that jesus died and jesus looks from his throne and say satan you had him give way and he gives you way to walk out of that prison many people will be healed tonight i mean it from the depths of my heart many restorations will happen tonight 
some of you may not even be able to hold this bottle i tell you because i'm about to pray that the power of the highest that overshadowed mary that it will come upon this communion everybody rise up just blast in tongues for five minutes Ratatakapa, the speaking blood, the speaking blood, the speaking blood, the atoning blood, the speaking blood, the atoning blood, the speaking blood. He says, Joshua Selman not guilty joshua selman not guilty yes you sin but the blood speaks the blood speaks let him go free let her go free i paid it with my life hear me hear me revelations 11 and 12 begins to tell us that satan is called the accuser of the brethren when they caught the woman who was in adultery the bible says they caught her in the very act that means they didn't even allow her to take her bath with all the evidences they dragged her to jesus and jesus said he who does not have sin cast the first stone and when they left he said woman where are your accusers that's what satanic altars do they lift up accusations legal accusations that will keep you in sickness legal accusations that you will not get that job legal accusations that the marriage will not come but tonight as you leave the communion the speaking blood the blood of the Lord Jesus that speaks that speaks that advocates hallelujah everybody shout the blood that speaks the blood that sets free the blood that redeems The blood that satisfies justice. Now listen. Listen. Before I begin to administer the communion. We are going to do it very fast. I tell you I sense the anointing of God strong on me. Because after this I am going to lay hands on people. Hallelujah. Listen. There are two prayer points we are going to pray. The first one, Isaiah 53 verse 1, it says, who has believed our report? So this is for those who believe the report. There are people who have not believed the report. So the communion will not make any sense to you. But tonight, who has believed this report? Who has believed that the blood speaks? I don't care what religion you belong to. I don't care what you have done or not done. Tonight, first prayer point, Lord, I believe your report. Lift your voice and pray. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Shepata, I believe you died for me. 
you shed your blood which represents your life as the highest price greater love had no man than this than a man laid down his life than a man laid down his life by shedding his blood lay down his life hallelujah hallelujah i wrote a book years ago it never got to be published the title of the book is not guilty it was a revelation i hope that when god permits us to start writing books and publishing it i believe that that's one of the books that will set people free not guilty everybody say not guilty I want you to look at all the things you have done right and say because of the blood I am not guilty look at all the things that you have done wrong and say because of the blood I am not guilty yes I stole money but because I believe this report I am not guilty yes I served idols it's true that I went to the shrine but because of the speaking blood I am not guilty atonement remission liberty hallelujah hallelujah last prayer point in one minute i like you to pray radically mention all the things you need the blood to speak over tonight lift your voice and begin to pray please take it seriously lord let the blood speak there is a chain over my life let the blood speak tonight this terminal disease this barrenness this mental backwardness the speaking blood we invoke the power of the speaking blood hey. over my marital life access to wealth and prosperity over my spiritual life i invoke the power of the speaking blood of the speaking blood hallelujah hallelujah let's have all the heads of department please quickly quickly let's save time mighty things will happen in this place listen listen we're going to start from outside i know that i know that many of us have taken communion in our churches some we do it every week and you just think it's a formula to satisfy hunger tonight you will know that there is a power you watch what happens in this place as we begin to take the communion because i'm about to pray without the holy spirit this is zobo and wafers but the power of the highest shall overshadow it hallelujah I'll serve the heads of departments. You take it quickly. I tell you, see, some of you, as you take this communion, things will begin to happen. Not just miracles. You will know that something is happening to you. Listen. The Bible says, I will show signs in the heavens and signs in the earth. It said, blood, fire, and smoke. father in the name of the lord jesus christ let the power of the highest 
overshadow this you left two sacraments with the church the first is the doctrine of baptisms buried with Christ and risen with him the second is the communion the mystery of our union partakers of his suffering that have qualified in the sufferings of Christ and now to walk in the glory that follows Holy Spirit rest upon this in the name of Jesus let this communion be empowered it ceases to just be mortal liquid let this contain the power of God I give this communion a voice in the spirit that the moment it is taken let it begin to speak over altars let it speak over the works of darkness let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon this communion in the name of Jesus Christ worship team are you ready you minister to us powerfully everyone just begin to pray in tongues they will direct you I will serve the heads of department quickly and then they'll coordinate it you start coming from outside non-stop until we are done please be praying in tongues the moment you take it hallelujah listen it's going to be in this order you pick the bread just one piece you take the cup and then you put the cup here and just go back I'm sure that we're going to need some more cups so please make sure we coordinate ourselves well hallelujah thank you Jesus in that same night when he took of the bread he said this is my body just take a piece Lord we do this with reverence go ahead take it take it and then pick the cup just pick one all right very quickly outside start rushing to come the power of god is so strong here just be praying as you're coming quickly quickly please just pick one take the drink and move welfare please walk with us let's let's have replenishing very quickly the speaking blood, the speaking blood, the speaking blood, the speaking blood, the speaking blood. The speaking blood. As you go back to your seat, begin to pray and prophesy. Please keep coming outside. Hurry up, hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. Yokes are breaking. The blood is speaking. The blood is speaking. The blood is speaking. Please go take it in safe time. Safe time, do it very fast. Thank 
Sick bodies are getting healed. The Lord is healing people. The blood is speaking healing. Say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Call the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Save time, those outside. Blood. 
the speaking blood the life of God you are taking in the very life of God the mystery of communion chain break every 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 
Change. Come on, prophesy to get change. Change. me very quickly to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 10. Verse 27. My God, the power of the Holy Ghost is strong in this place. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your own. Worshippers, go and take your own quickly. Isaiah 10, 9, 10 27. Isaiah 10, 27. And it shall come to pass in that day. Which day? Which day? Which day? That the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder. And his yoke from off your neck. He said, and the yoke shall be destroyed. Because of the anointing. I didn't just choose to do this. Trust me. It is hard work to lay hands on everybody in this place. Hallelujah. There are three things that you will receive as I lay hands on you. It's important you know. Number one. Many of you are going to receive fresh unction. Fresh unction. You will know that there is an upgrade in your spiritual life. The second thing that you are going to receive is a breakthrough anointing upon your life. Breakthrough, breakthrough. The Bible says that you shall receive, the yoke shall be taken because of the anointing. We need, not only will you receive breakthroughs, hallelujah. And the third thing is that as I lay hands on you, those who are sick, let her try and take it. Please, she must take it. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. No matter what it is, if she can't stand, just take her somewhere. Please, just if, if they are done, just move the tables. Hallelujah. You will be healed, the third thing. These three things will come upon you. Please, someone, can you just get a rack or the tissue? Just clean this quickly, please. Again, we are going to start from outside. It's going to be a quick match. As you march, just lay your hands and say, Lord, as these hands come upon me. Many of you are so used to laying on of hands. You, you experience it every day and every time. When Benny Hinn was laying hands on the people, Ora Roberts looked at him and said, Benny, don't just lay hands on them. Give them something. Give them something. Hallelujah. The laying on of hands is even a doctrine in the spirit. Hallelujah. Father, let your power come upon this oil. Let there be 
breakthroughs worshipers i need you to be in the spirit and i need you to give a sacrifice of worship let it not stop at all the instruments i tell you there is a heavy anointing on me right now ushers we will need you so that those who fall um, we can coordinate them pray for one minute say lord let something come upon my life especially those who are coming from outside Zaria. I give the chase. I give the chase. I give the chase. Lord, may your power come upon my hands. May they become the hands of the Christ. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please come quickly. I give the chase for Take the fire. Take 
rose together. Just hold the mic for me.
Oye de mema Oye di kagi Ekele di riki Oye na woria Oye di kagi Ekele di riki Oye de mema Oye di kagi Ekele di riki Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. 
Lord Jesus, we give you the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I won't do much. Next week is miracle service. We'll have time to do a lot of great things. But the power of God is very strong here. Father, I declare. Let the blood begin to speak. Right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the blood begin to speak now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the blood begin to speak now. Let the blood begin to speak now. Let the blood begin to speak now. Let the blood begin to speak outside. Let the blood begin to speak inside. Against every voice that is not of God. I command, let the life of God that has paid for everything that the devil attempts to hold you captive for. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Satan, the price has been paid. Release them now. Release them now. The price has been paid. Be free now. Be healed now. Receive restoration now. Receive breakthrough now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Believe in the Lord. Many believers don't believe God. Many believers. It has to be in this order. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe what about him? Believe that he is God. You can believe he's a deity. That's not the information required for your greatness. You can believe that he's not a man. Satan too is not a man. Many other spirits too are not men. So there's nothing special about believing that he's not a man. You must believe that he's the mighty God. And you must believe in his ability. I, I don't know how to make you see this. Look, let me tell you, when you focus on God and who he is and his might, you will turn back and see the possibility of your situation shrinking before him. And then you will be brought to a point where you will agree. Lord, you can change my life, I believe. Lord, you can wipe my tears. There are many faithless people just because they are holding their Bibles and speaking what is written there. They think they believe. No! It's a conviction. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I believe you. That's why he left us the word of God, to help us believe him. The word of God is a commitment from God to you. It's, it's, it's a manifesto. It's to give you room to vet him. That means if you have any fears as to why you should not believe him, he still leaves the word. Are we together? Believe in the Lord your God. By doing so, you shall be established. So he says, be convinced and convicted about who God is and what he's able to do. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 2 says, but I know whom I have believed. He says, I am persuaded that he is able. I am persuaded that he is able. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. Listen, it says, For he that cometh to God, like you have come now, it says, You must come believing that he exists and then that he is a rewarder. Let me see how many of you came from far. If you came from far, let me see your hands. How many of you honestly had quite a stressful journey coming? Now, do you think, please drop your hands, thank you. Do you think 
that God will watch you live wherever you heard the, someone came from Ghana someone came from Maiduguri so within and outside this nation people coming there are many people connecting from around the world do you believe if you were God will you sit on your throne and watch someone almost have an accident and for 12 hours come and sit down some of you have been here probably since 12 in the afternoon or two or three and then as God you sit down and then say okay share the grace may God bless you I don't know the God you gave your life to but the one I gave my life to is a serious God it's a very serious God we are used to people playing games with our lives God is not just a trustworthy God he is too serious that he gave his son to die and then he will play games with your life no sir he's a rewarder he's a rewarder let me tell you something you've heard me say it if you ever find yourself coming here to koinonia that you arrive here safely alone is a sign that half of your challenges have gone um, now uh, you would think i'm saying it just because i'm the man of god here you decide to come here and see the attacks that will arise money that you are saving will disappear all of a sudden oh, every to some of you the morning to come you are not even yet sure whether you will come it's a spirit believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god sister believe in the lord your god my brother believe in the lord your god concerning your admission believe in the lord your god concerning the baby i know it's five years but believe in the lord your god believe concerning god turning your life around you need more than a job you need breakthrough you need favor if you get a job of fifty thousand, you are still backward because you should have been working for the past 10 years so now the issue is not just a job of 50 or 100 thousand that god can you shift my what would have been the backlog of the past shift my 10 years to enter my september and wait for me there that i can enter september and I, I, it will look as if september is 10 years put together One of the greatest ways breakthrough comes is the manipulation of time. Read your Bible and see what God did with time when it was time to visit people. He made the sun to stand still. He made the sun to go backward. Are we together? He did something to time. When you lose time, you have lost everything. Believe in the Lord your God. Number two. Please, let's go back to um, Second Chronicles. He said, believe in his prophets. Listen carefully. His prophets here doesn't just mean someone that prophesies. His prophets here doesn't even mean someone who is not fake. That means someone who is real. That's not what he's talking about. He said, believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. To prosper means to do well. He says, believe his prophets. His prophets are not just people who prophesy. His prophets are not just real men of God. <clears throat> Listen carefully. This is where we miss it. You must learn this. His prophets here are not just men who are doing the biddings of God. It has nothing to do with maybe someone being real. His prophets here means the person sent to you listen listen the bible um come sam come darling look at this i'm elijah and i'm going to the house of a widow of zarephath are we together don't you think on my way going i'm going to meet other people who have problems so I meet a gentleman who has a problem and I just greet him. How are you? Where is the house of the widow of Zarephath? He's shaking me but doesn't receive anything because I'm not sent to him. I'm a prophet. I probably met other widows. Elijah probably met other widows lamenting and he said, Oh dear, you mean it? You mean this how your life is? Sorry, eh? And he kept going. 
the same way jesus saw 10 lepers the same way jesus would see people and touch one and stand up and go there is a man sent to you there is an anointing sent to you listen i know that many people would not like me for what i'm telling you not every anointing can bless you generally speaking by opening your heart i mean at the anointing a portion to change your destiny it's true hear what i'm telling you and then god will bless you there is an anointing a portion there is a grace designated let me tell you happy are you the day you come into the environment where the anointing that was sent for you do you know let me tell you this and i tell you this honestly my heart is passionate when it has to do with blessing people but i have met people in my life that i just prayed for them just for praying sake but i knew in my spirit i wasn't sent to them of course you won't tell them so they don't feel bad but you know but i've seen others i could even wait for them to share their challenges because i know i know the anointing sent to you so believe his prophets are we together there were many widows in zarafath elijah was looking for just one haba prophet what of other women <clears throat> i love them i can pray i can intercede may god bless you do a b and c but i'm looking for a woman of zarafath where is she finally you find her and his clash is not even ready for you she's doing something else the prophet would have been angry to say i spent time to come here you don't even know what you are missing i'm on my way going but because he was sent he had to stay his assignment was to change her life when you find the anointing and the prophet that god has sent over your life and your situation let me tell you you will watch that anointing rubbish your situation in the as if satan does not exist is it's not just this is where we have a little challenge with many believers who just say the most important thing is god yes you are right but you are wrong the most anointing is anointing what is there what is so special about this man of god this is what i'm teaching you now people are sent to people even the word of god is sent he sent his word like a messenger meaning until that word is sent you can stay there but when the word comes like a messenger angel gabriel left other believers around earth and was directed to one person daniel all that fight for 21 days in the heavenlies he would have been angry to say i'm going to someone else mm -mm. he said daniel i am come to give you understanding are you the only one i am come to give you understanding jesus is appearing by the road saul is on his way to damascus brothers and sisters the bible says there were other people with saul god would have been fair enough to at least give them something and then he isolates one person and discusses with the person the rest just fall down and don't even know what threw them down they just got up to clean themselves and say kai now wow, what is all this one now whereas one person has that encounter sent 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 the word that changes my life sent i have had encounters with sent words and sent prophets and my god did my life change tonight let me tell you if you can believe this he said believe his prophets i know you are a businessman i know you are educated i know you are smart but there are many equations in this life that cannot be solved with pen and paper they are solved from the realm of the spirit it's only the result you receive here are we together now believe in his prophets so shall you prosper write this down please his prophet here is the vessel sent from him to you you must first acknowledge 
that this vessel is sent from God to you. And one of the ways that you can help yourself to believe the prophet God has sent to you is investigate the dealings of God with that man. Don't just believe for nothing. You have a right to investigate the dealings of God with that man. What is so special about this man? Why should I believe him? Why should I take the word that he's bringing seriously? Every true prophet of God has a track record of his dealings with God. Investigate the dealings of God. Study the track records of his results. I think it's unfair if you just yoke people to believe you just like that. No. Give them room to study the track records of your result and find out whether the results are worth your believing. How do you believe his prophets? Open up your spirit to receive both his grace and his instructions. Don't just receive the grace alone. Instructions. Many times believers miss it because we miss instructions. Very subtle instructions. Sometimes very ego stinging instructions. Like you were seated here now and then I just said everybody shout Jesus. You know, I don't mean to embarrass your intelligence. You don't sit on a seat and shout Jesus. You've been singing a song before you came here. You, there was Jesus more than 10 times in that song. You kept shouting Jesus, Jesus, lover of my soul. And nothing happened. And here you are sitting and a man is saying just shout Jesus once. If you don't have this revelation, you can sit down and say, please, what is, we are not children here. What is all this nonsense? He told Naaman, go to Jordan. Wash seven times. Naaman said, me? Jordan. There are clean rivers somewhere. And the small girl said, you are the one in trouble. If you don't go and wash, you can go back with your lepros. Two scriptures. And then we'll pray. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 31. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. He says, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and also what? His servant Moses. God performs mighty things and creates that track record. Not just so that he alone will be believed. God also wants the vessel he's using to be believed. The Bible says they feared the Lord. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. You believe the Lord, you don't believe his servant, you may not get any miracle. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, look up please. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. That means, I can talk to you without the cloud, but I keep that cloud as that evidence so that the people can trust that it is me you are talking to. I'm, I'm going that far because I don't just want the people to believe me alone. I want them to believe you too because their receiving is dependent on their, both their believing me, God, and their believing you, his servant. He says, and the Lord said, I come in a thick cloud. So sometimes when God does some of these signs and wonders, it's, it's not really just for him alone. When God does some of these things, oh, there's a lady here and someone is shouting. Another, you know what God is doing? He's using those things. It's, it's a similitude of the cloud to help you see. You can call somebody and say, who is grace or who is um, victory? And you can say, this is just guessing. I'm sure it's just guessing. But how do you guess that someone in this direction do you guess that one? God does some of these things sometimes 
purposely to just address the the leftover of unbelief because you see some of us are coming from different christian experiences some of us have been our minds have been messed up by all kinds of theology all kinds of philosophies some of us have had bad experiences with all kinds of men of god prophets and whatever and chances are that when you come like this usually you will just add the man of god to the list of all the people and hope that he's just a better version of them and god says not so and he uses these signs to speak to you that you are in mount zion are we together it's amazing how a little miracle can just readjust your own belief immediately readjust your own belief while the devil is trying to lie to you can your life be changed all of a sudden the the power will touch the person near you this is somebody you shook hands with turn to your neighbor and say this and that so you know that the person uh, the person can be acting It's a very difficult thing for believers to believe God. But I think it's even harder to believe a man of God. And people have all kinds of justifications as to why they shouldn't believe men of God. But regardless of what your justifications are, if you believe God and don't believe the vessel, you will be established but you will not prosper. Are we together? Your prosperity is what gives evidence to your establishment. You must believe one word from God can turn your life around one prophetic word can turn your life around all these strange spirits that oppress people they don't just go because they are told to go no it takes the anointing I was talking with one of the protocol uh, people when we were coming down here and I told him I was shaking my head and then I was talking to him and I said I am amazed driving down to come for the miracle service now. I said, I am amazed at how people in Africa and Nigeria trivialize success. I am shocked at how people um, believe that success is about luck. It's amazing how people can see a huge sacrifice and trivialize it and just make it look like, I think these people are just fortunate. Is that true? I, I, these were my contemplations while I was coming. Listen, there's no result that happens in this kingdom by mistake. No. Including the testimony you are about to have. That gentleman from Ghana, he did not just press this thing and found my name. No, 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 no. The anointing that is sent with that word works day or night are we together now there are many testimonies just like his that gentleman you see that now someone will tell you i was sitting and i had a dream how about those who buy new phones brand new phones brand new phones and then they open it and see koinonia messages inside how do you explain that A new phone, not new, uh, what do they call that thing? Not new memory card. I'm not talking about new memory card. A new phone that you bought it, tear rubber, you are the one who opened it. Then the first thing you see inside is a message that answers your question. Who, who now, who, how do you explain that? Listen, listen. We live in a world that is not natural. It only manifests the spiritual naturally. The, 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 the earlier you got this, the better. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. All that you see in this world is only a reflection. Say reflection. The real control room in this our world is the realm of the spirit. Whoever can ascend this three-dimensional realm has the advantage of victory. Nothing happens that is physical. Are we together? One of the reasons why many of us are seated here tonight, among the many miracles we desire is finance. Oh, Nigerians, finance. You want to talk a good news to any honest Nigerian right now? In this day and age, as we transit into the ember month, no matter speak about their spiritual life yes speak about their love for god passion new depths but please don't ignore 
that other one just even if he's in passing just say something about it finance many people want to see financial breakthrough many people are working and they are trusting god for breakthrough and remember the strange thing about finance do you know why listen i'm not talking about money we're going to pray shortly do you know why many believers are poor because in the kingdom finance is warfare money is not just an instrument to live well it's a weapon see listen oh dear what's it ecclesiastes 7 let me just talk a little you was uh I, I didn't plan to say this but ecclesiastes 7 verse 12 let me show you something may god give somebody deliverance right now read it read it one to read for wisdom is a defense uh-huh and money is a defense just stop there so we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense now look up when the bible says you have a weapon what is a weapon something you use to both defend yourself and you can use also for attack is that true if you give me a weapon like a shield i use it for defense and the bible says one of the many weapons money is one of them and the bible says those weapons are not carnal the word not carnal means they are not man-made but my brother my sister this thing is man-made it was made by cbn that means this is not what god is talking about because this is man-made but the bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal he said it is mighty through god that means there is a spirit are you getting what i'm saying that means this thing is only the body the same way human being is called currency anything that moves is a living thing and that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it you are only seeing the body where is the spirit that moves it that's why it can enter a house you didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself it can enter your account and still go out because it's warfare the bible says, believe is prophets there is something they can do that can do something to the many things including this this is what we chase all around because we think this is paper no this is not this is paper yes but there is a spirit behind it and this thing respects that spirit this is what you need to understand so the spirit can instruct it to leave you and it can leave no matter how hard working you are you can receive salary and all you have is part of this left and it can be instructed to leave you it will, you know it's going it's going out of your life it just touches your hand and disappears because the weapons prosperity is warfare it's not just about money to buy car and houses money is a defense it can defend the gospel it can defend a man and the bible says all those weapons they are not carnal so if you ever see this looking for anybody naira does not look for men something makes it come I, please are you getting what i'm saying if you can understand this alone at least even if you don't know how it comes you already know that it doesn't come by itself these are the mysteries that surround our kingdom you ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom my brothers and my sisters listen to me this is a spiritual realm you don't have to be a christian to believe it you just have to be alive this is a spiritual realm animals know it plants know it's a spiritual realm that's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it you don't leave it open you cover it because what happens there is none of your business now you just cover it and watch it happen and it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down a little seed 
when you planted it it had no roots the bible says just like you do not know the way of the wind nor how a woman how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child you know and all of that so also you don't know the way of god the lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities listen that are beyond the realm of the eyes are we together most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain unfortunately in this kingdom there are things that you may not be able to explain when people come here to testify you see me sit quietly and i watch and many times i'm in shock as i watch the immutability of god's power in the lives of people the same way you are going to come up here to testify yes it's true what suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say we are sending you to us to get a job Hapa, my brothers and my sisters i've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who i need whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal that you're sitting and someone says i'm thinking of you who do you think you are no i want to help you i want to bless you you step into prepared blessings blessings that you are as sure he said master we have toiled all night and jesus looked at them you know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net then you quickly pull it in the morning that's how you were trained but let me show you another technology cast your net to the right side master but we only have left and right <clears throat> this one is not brain work now this one is not one plus one i told you one plus one plus god is equal to whatever he says the answer should be one plus one is two but one plus one plus God is not equal to two. It's not even equal to 10,000. It's equal to any answer that God puts there. So one plus one can be equal infinity. God said so. Are we together now? I'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that God is able to do anything at all when you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the holy spirit worked with you till you came today you should know already that there is a god in heaven are we together now brothers and sisters i present to you this same god who can change your life who will change your life i'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others wow this is how god has changed this lady's life wow we are soon going to pray you must have a desperation and say lord i didn't come tonight to clap for anybody i left my journey wherever lord i know that you will visit me and i hold on to the horns of the altar while you are sitting the devil is telling you remember tomorrow by 12 your rent or embarrassment say satan go away and before the presence of god tomorrow is too far god can how many minutes does it take to do a transfer I believe him yes i do i believe him i believe him i believe him i believe he can change my life in one minute i want you to just mention everything you are trusting god to do tonight go ahead lord i believe you for this i believe you for that Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. Any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil. It's a Luciferian spirit. Let your spirit and let your attention be open. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Mention it. Don't say it's too big. That's the devil. Too big compared to what? Pray, believers. 
Lord, I know you are able. You are able to take away this reproach from this family. Talk to Jesus. Even if you find yourself crying, just continue to speak. Lord, you are able. Change this situation. Turn my academics around. Lord, turn my finances around. Lord, I'm in a situation right now where only you, the God of heaven, can arise. Turn my ministry around. Lord, I'm confused. I don't even know where to go right now. I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right, but I receive grace. Pray. Are you praying? Kill unbelief as you are praying. Don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time. God of heaven. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving, it says, make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, I'm here tonight because I want you to turn the situation of my family around. Lord, there is a death sentence over my family, and you have to arise for me tonight. Lord, there is a death sentence over my life. Lord, I've been delayed 10 years of my life. I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here seven children lost including twins lord i'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life something has happened to the anointing upon my life something has happened to the glory upon my destiny i'm here tonight oh god turn my life around turn my life around Something has happened. The signs and wonders are no more like before. The revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before. I'm here for a turnaround, oh God. My prayer life has died. I'm here for a reawakening. I no longer fast. I no longer pray. I don't know what has happened to me. I cry for help. One more prayer point Lord I believe you and I believe your servant I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around walk on any unbelief in my heart oh God and take it out tonight go ahead and pray every spirit of doubt every spirit of fear
Isaiah 61. Please participate in everything we are doing. It's going to be a very fast one, but let your spirit be open. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord, the same Lord that you are instructed to believe, hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Now listen, this is why he anointed me, because there is an agenda. But that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart. It takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart. To proclaim liberty. Now I like this one. To proclaim, to declare that the time has come for you to walk free. It says, and the opening of prison. My brothers and my sisters, there can be men physically walking, but they are in prison. Next verse. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. It takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men. It takes the anointing. Verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Now this is the part I like. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified so the end of it is for god to be glorified but not in the current state no so anything in your family make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service don't just stand alone to receive I've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed, you are not free. You are not free at all. If you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken, you are still not free. Are we together now? Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let me give us one last prayer point. Father, every desire I brought here tonight, I'm not walking back with it. Lift your voice and pray. Every. Let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakato. Talato shabra hasikete malakata. Shakata kata barakata barate kete barekush. Every desire. Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness.
praise the Lord. Please lift your hands. I will pray now. Now, the people I'm going to ask to come out, if the anointing comes upon your life right now, then the Lord... Okay. I want to pray a prayer now. Please be your brother's keeper. Whether you are inside or outside, it's because of what will happen when I pray. The anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically. That's why I'm saying you should. You should just hold them. Are we together now? The Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside, outside, online, and I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed, and speed must come upon them. Right now, I declare, at the count of three, one, two, three, receive that grace. I command speed, speed, right now, speed. Let the hand of God come upon you. The Bible says the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah, and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I command speed, receive it. It's coming on you now. Some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family. It's not just you alone. It's coming on you for the sake of your family. Let the chains be broken. I release speed. Speed. In one month. In one month. I'm prophesying that in one month, what has not been done in five years in one month receive that grace i energize your spirit man speed when speed comes upon a family you will see it in the result when speed comes upon your spiritual life when speed comes upon your academics i'm praying again the angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed. I release that grace. Let that anointing come upon you. Speed, speed, in the name of Jesus Christ. Speed. Now, now listen. Fire in the spirit has many significance. Fire, this fire is a mystery. It was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here. Fire does not run away from any element. Fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit. Whether you put metal, the metal will be hot. Wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing Yet it is not destroyed. It is not solid. It is not liquid. Are we together? It looks like gas, but it's there. You are seeing it. You can't hold it. You can't cage fire. You can't lock it up. It's not restrained by anything. The Holy Ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire. Listen. This fire, I want you to bring those people out. This fire you see will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song 
What's the name of that song? Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Am I correct? So you know what I'm talking about. So you sing that song by the time we pray. In the name of Jesus, I'm stretching my hands right now. Spirit of the Lord, you seek to reveal yourself as fire. That consuming fire. No power and no spirit. Even spirits can be burnt by fire. In the name of Jesus, I declare that any operation that is not of God at the count of three by the mystery of the Holy Ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire I declare any chain if there is anyone under the sound of my voice and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three may that fire locate chains in this place now one two three chains be broken chains be broken Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Sing below, blow, blow, blow like a mighty Spirit of victory, Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Cover us with your wings. Hallelujah, Madam. Please clear the way for me. These women, tap these women for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too? Um, is, this the, is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Mama? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around it to surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
Where is that man that came from my Duguri? The one who came to give a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I've seen fire. It's leaving my hands and it's coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, where is that man? We have to hurry up. There's, there's a lot to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I decree and declare over your life. That fire. The Lord, it looks like you are an elderly woman, but the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from Eduguri. What is this? My CV. Your CV. You are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? Yes. You believe that? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me, okay, sometimes this time, time, time just affects you. But I'm praying right now and I'm seeing letters and I'm seeing on the letter, congratulations, listen. And I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough. Listen, let me tell you, except God is not God. If this anointing that I'm seeing touches you, then you and your family must stand here and testify. I'm stretching my hands right now. Lord, you are showing me this. In the name of Jesus, this is a symbol of breakthrough. I stretch my hands. Every family and every person that must receive of this grace. I'm stretching my hands now. You must testify. I release upon you that grace. You must testify. I declare whatever it will translate to, whether a job, whether increase, whether promotion, I command it, I declare it, I decree it. In the name of Jesus, I command it, I decree it, I declare it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hold the hands of this lady. This one. Hold the hands of this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands right now and I declare it's time for your family to rise. I'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and I decree and declare every embargo that holds onto that family, I command that it's gone now. In the name of Jesus, it is gone. I curse the power of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards me. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. And there are many of you, there is no grace on the works of your hands. I look and in the spirit, I don't see the blessing of the Lord working. That's what is responsible for hardship. It's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this. But in the name of Jesus, I stand representing the spirit of God. And I stretch my hands back to you. 
I'm declaring still that ministry of fire. Many of you will be surprised. Whatever it is you are involved in, God is about to bring grace upon it. I stretch my hands right now at the count of three. May the fire of God come through your hands into your life. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, whatever has not been working in your life, I force it to work right now. Receive that anointing. I force it to work now. Inside, outside, I force it to work now. Those following online, I pray and I speak whatever it is that you are doing. I declare the blessing. I activate the blessing upon the work of your hand. I take away hardship from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take away hardship from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yabone nakawo Sujata ne nakawo Sarkin salama Sarkin aljana Yabone nakawo Yabone nakawo Sujata ne nakawo Sarkin salama the Lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is I'm seeing fire Still, this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically you will feel fire burning and ideas the Lord is birthing things is is a birthing in the spirit I release that grace right now in the name of Jesus Lord all those who must see show them oh God where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life I decree and declare receive that grace the grace of an open eye the grace of an open vision may the Lord show you where the resources of your destiny is may the Lord show you where your helpers are in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. This, the prayer is for everybody, eh? But this particular prayer now is for ladies. The Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed. Outwardly, you are beautiful, you are good looking, you are virtuous, you are wonderful. But in the realm of the spirit, it's not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in the, in the realm of the spirit. A man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful. The gate was beautiful, but the man's life was nonsense. There are many people you can stand. I'm, I'm saying everybody, but this is ex specifically for our sisters. And it's not just the issue of marriage. I'm not talking about marriage alone. That there is a fragrance, a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life. But many of you physically, they look at you and you look like you are beautiful, you are this, you are that. But in the realm of the spirit, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. That, that force, that veil must be torn. In the name of Jesus, ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people, especially our sisters. I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity, any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed, but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny right now by the fire of the holy ghost sisters may that anointing come upon you now may that grace come upon you now i declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is i change it now in the name of jesus 
I change it now in the name of Jesus. Listen. A man's destiny can be exchanged. It's true. Have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives? A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come. I don't know you, but I want to pray for you, sir. God is going to turn your life around. And you see this prayer that I'm saying generally, this prayer, sir, is for you. You are a shadow of your life. Of your is your dad. Where did he come from? From high there. From high there. From high there. Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. This is not just about your leg. Huh? This is about your destiny. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare Shalos Kaprahasegete Barandos Kapriashata. Ente skalabra hafas kata barakoto supriata kata. Mande kres koda hashabari katos kada. Natos kada, natos kata, mashada kata. Empre kete koto koto bat sada balakata. Shapres kete 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 balakata, shapriata kata. In the name of Jesus, anyone who has exchanged your destiny, sir, I decree and declare restoration now. You are the daughter hold my hands i pray for you look at me you are a wonderful lady huh but bad things continue to happen in your life huh you are a nice lady are you married i'm married well with that one. don't worry i know why i'm saying you get what i'm saying now yes, sir. because what i'm seeing this is a spirit you are a nice lady but people continue to misunderstand you yes, sir. Yes, good sir. things and people look at you in the eye of many people now you are you are a devil you are a terrible lady yes, but it's sir. not true yes, you have a very beautiful heart this is what happens when do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people a ministry can be under this captivity no matter the bible said don't let your good be evil spoken of you can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you and people end up fighting you you bought something for them and they end up you are saying what is this i pray for you and the person says so you are trying to say i'm the one who is not spiritual it's a spirit my dear i want to pray for you huh? this thing is not just about your marriage that is you know things have gone wrong you are a wonderful lady Huh? favor will come close to you but then never enter your life yes, sir. what yes, do you sir. do i'm working in a security uh, you are a security yes sir. did you go to school yes sir. i'm running my master you are running your masters yes, my dear do you believe god can change your life yes, now sir. i believe sir hold my hands to appoint unto them you see that to appoint this one is a prophet's reward it's not just that god is saying do this there is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward the possibilities that accompany an office i declare in the name of the god of heaven whom i represent may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you listen I lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, sir, I'm praying for your daughter in your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you as a father will say this one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it, I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God, I want to pray a very serious prayer because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. 
because of that work no man can see you to marry you demonic work that closes you everywhere i decree and declare i stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace if you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny i take you out of that place and i shift you to the place of destiny i shift i shift you in the spirit i shift you by prophecy in the name of jesus christ listen if the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her that's how her miracle would have gone it matters that you are in the right place at the time god sends your miracle some of these things in the name of employment they are traps of the devil i'm not saying it's not good to work don't get me wrong but many of them are traps from the peace of hell there are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth simply in the name of job are we together nonsense job that on sunday you're on your way going to church your boss calls you and says you must come and resume what shall it profit a man if you gain the what is it is that the whole world how much is the salary lose your soul for peanuts i declare again in the name of jesus may my god relocate someone here by the power of the holy spirit may my god relocate a destiny relocate a family if you are not in your assigned place i shift you tonight in the name of jesus christ Do you know, listen, we're going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, they will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this. It matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad and the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the spirit. There are some of you. It's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians. You go to embassies. And see Nigerians. They want to go abroad by fire by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you. Greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, Do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that cement right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. 
your blessing is not just generically in US or UK there are people suffering in every nation it takes the leadership of the spirit hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord now two things we are going to do very quickly and i know you have been doing this but please i want to plead with you to do it with understanding most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding that's why we are not blessed are we together we are going to pray for the sick now don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way come here convincing knowing that god is going to touch you and while we are doing that um, your prayer if you don't have your prayer request please write it quickly write it quickly and in case your faith you came here with a faith that is weak you did write some vital things you can add it quickly those online you can send you can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jax is here. Are we together? Now, overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow one outside. We'll walk to your projector stand. Overflow two. You'll also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three walk to your projector stand those who are in here you are trusting god to touch you to touch your family members you can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now please quickly quickly let's do that very quickly while we are doing that please if you have written your prayer request i want you to wave it and ushers you may find a way of splitting yourself very quickly let's let's have ushers if the ushers are not in your pr department you can join them and then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request um, is obtained, please. For those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still here to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone, and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying you can just connect with it it's not just a ritual believe in what we're doing in the name of Jesus we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing Pastor Jax Ejimi, there. Um, Pastor Alpha, Benga, Overflow, one. Pastor Femi, Promise, Overflow, two. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people. God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us a moment of praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you. Just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here in the name of jesus now those of you who when you submit your prayer request don't just be staring this is not a cinema you should be praying 
Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful, spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be healed right now.
song will be that's what my song will be that's what my song will be hallelujah that's what my song will be that's what my song will be and that's what my song will be hallelujah hallelujah that's what my song that's what my song will be 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 hallelujah hallelujah that's what my song that's what my song will be 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 come on say what my song will be and that's what my song will be hallelujah that's what my song will be that's what my song will be that's what my song will be Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, if you are here to submit your request, just do it as soon as we're done. There are people waving their request there. So while the worship team is leading us, please make sure that, that you are in the spirit of worship. I know that you are feeling it, but make sure your heart is connected. So Alpha and Omega. We worship your name. Yeah. We worship your name. 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 We are praying on your request now. I'd like you to open your heart. Just pray in the spirit in one minute. Those following from any nation of the world, I'd like you to just pray. We're just going to pray and speak over this. Go ahead. Stretch your hands. We're praying on this request. Father, let your people return with testimonies. Ashala gata brada gata baraka to sada brada gadech. In the cross asia sahasa baraka to shabrada gada baladaba. Raka ta branda gada baladabosh. Ebratos kada brandi gadi baladabosh. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations be turned around by the Spirit of God. Lekato shata prate kato sabrede gadeba. 
Rakata parata paratosa de prete que te baladaba. Aratosa que le monta shin daba. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, it is before you. These prayers are laid out. Father, we give you praise. Thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will do. Thank you for prayers. Thank you for answers. Thank you for praises. Thank you for testimonies that abounds. Father, we give you praise for there is nothing impossible with you. We give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto unbeatable. Lord, you will bend things tonight in the name of Jesus. You will change things tonight in the name of Jesus. You will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit. You bring healings. You bring deliverance. You will bring breakthrough, financial breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. You bring changes, Lord, deaths, supernatural deaths will be cancelled by the power of your spirit. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we turn it into testimonies. Yeah. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month, you will, you will almost not have any request to write. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone, but I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life now. Apostle, why do we do this all the time? Because this is how you program the destinies of people. These words you see, they are not just languages. It's not just the speaking. You know, I never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that this month of September you are entering, let it be called your season of strange results. Let it be called your season of strange results. Anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life, in the name of Jesus, may God use your life to prove a point. I decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw, the raw power of God the same way God comes to man may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life I declare by the hand of God Almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of Jesus Christ what you cannot do for yourself I ask my God to do it for you in this season. 
if you're a man of God here, I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God, may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you. I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough. I've taught you the principles of finances, but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth. Are we together now? And in the name of Jesus, I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah. I decree and declare, may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every family represented here. In the name of Jesus, and I say this from the depth of my heart, enough is enough. I prophesy it again, enough is enough. Whatever represents setbacks in any family, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and I command that an end comes to it this night. Every graduate here that is trusting God for a job, you heard the testimony here, in the name of Jesus Christ, both where you applied and where you didn't apply, may the angel of the Lord see to it that a miracle job locates you. Those who are in business here, in the name of Jesus, business is spiritual, the grace that will cause your business to command strange results. May that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. If there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of God, that means if God does not step in for you, you know you are in trouble. I stand by the gift of prophecy and I decree and declare over your life, come out of that trouble now. Whether it's a financial trouble, whether it's whatever, come out of it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every attack on your destiny, I decree and declare from tonight, by the assignment of angels, we ward off that attack in Jesus' name. Whoever has been destined by God to help you rise, and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit, he has not been able to locate you. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I call them by the spirit and I command that they locate you. <laughs> Believe in every prayer that we're praying. We're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity, minus you. <laughs> I say it again, minus you. Everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family, I declare the mystery of exemption over you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That when men say there is a casting down, I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year. I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last. I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ. Any door that was once open and is now closed, I reopen it in Jesus' name. I hope you believe everything I'm saying. Please believe it with all your heart. 
I pray for every student here. I don't know what challenge you may be having. Or I don't know what you are trusting God for. In the name of Jesus, I pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them. I don't care what needs to be done. Let it be done to move you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say it again. Let it be done to move you. There are some of our young ones that just wrote post UME. In the name of Jesus, there are some of you who the results you have seen now, from that result you will not get anything serious. I change that result now. I change that result now. I change that result now. Believe it, you are too young to walk in unbelief. I change that result now. Anyone assigned here program that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this ember whether by accident as you are moving listen no oh, i know our time is gone but i'm praying a very important prayer believers are careless and that's why sometimes we allow the devil to take advantage of us i declare whether by air or by land whether on bike kekena pep if it will crash you will never enter it i say it again if that vehicle is doomed for accident then i take you out of it but in the name of jesus if you enter it then it must not crash i pray for your finances again that in the name of jesus the worship team sang here and said ebenezer there is a god that can help men i pray for you directly finance that's the prayer i'm praying for you now i know you love god already i'm not doubting your passion for god but the resources that it will take especially for you my dear brothers it takes a lot for a young man to be established and it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day in the name of jesus the grace that helps men that can take a man from nowhere and establish him because you have believed the lord i command your establishment now He said, keep us, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. I pray for you. Any orchestration of evil, a trap of Satan, so that you will enter and it will destroy your life. Quarter to getting into that trap. I declare in the name of Jesus, may the Lord rescue you out of it. Two or three more prayers and we're done. Any friend in your life, any useless association in your life that is not profiting you spiritually, destiny-wise, financially, I caught it from the realm of the spirit this night. I ate it out of your life in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, there is a saying, show me your friends and I will show you your destiny. Some of us love God, but the demon in our life is the spirit that keeps bringing the worst of every kind of friend. You are born again, but the people that come to like you, to want to marry you, are people who don't love God. Or you are a nice, well-meaning brother, but your friend is an armed robber. Your friend is a 419er. Your friend, what? Any kind of wrong relationship, whether you are aware or not, in the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to you. Let there be a separation right now. And I pray for you. If there is any deceiver in your life, may my God expose them in this season. I know you don't like the prayer, but let me pray for you. 
if there is any deceiver in your life i say it again may the god of heaven expose them in this name. whatever has tampered with your love for god there is something called first love first love is fire fire for god fire for the house of god that they have to advise and encourage you now and say let us go he said i was glad not i was angry not i was dragging let me tell you if the passion for the house of god is dying in your life it's not a sign of spiritual growth it's a sign of an attack even if you think it's happening because you are a man of god that church they are not sharing anything that spirit is the spirit of the antichrist i declare fresh passion for the things of god fresh passion for the house of god you used to wake up in the morning and the first thing you think about is your bible but now you wake up the first thing is your phone the first thing is email the first thing is uh, what they call all those things social media all those things you are doing and before you know it you spend one hour there you say let me just do it for five minutes you wake up by three o'clock and you say i will study my bible but quickly you watch nigerian film all kinds of things in the name of jesus those things are not bad don't get me wrong but i don't care whatever it is if it is as taking the position of god i declare let it return back to his rightful position let me rebuke the spirit of laziness before we share the grace because let me tell you i have seen people as a man of god and as a leader i have seen people who will never become anything listen nigerians and especially we around here let's trust god for grace to be serious when a young man is snoring your way you are sleeping you watch movie till 1 a.m and then you sleep till 11 a.m you are signing poverty with your destiny both god and satan agree that laziness leads to suffering are we together there are many of us here I, I don't hate you you know i love you with all my heart but your deliverance needs to be laziness 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 i'm not as concerned about our sisters but this our brothers you are the ones i'm talking to Sister, that doesn't mean that sisters should be lazy because some of you god is even speaking to you through this reduce those movies reduce all those facebook thing and all of that and sit down gentlemen receive grace grace to stay awake when others are sleeping believers are lazy people and we just imagine that just because we have the anointing things will happen just like that if you are a man here and you are a married man please hear me and you know you are not catering for your family i love you but i'm telling you the truth by the word of god you are not being responsible no matter what the excuse is receive grace tonight to sit down and find out what do i need to do to feed my family let no man believer here born of god you return back home and there's no food and they are asking you and you are acting as if daddy have not paid school fees say what will i do is he responsible is he responsible before you have a child think and plan what are we going to do with this child that is coming not just that you give birth and then you start inconveniencing people in the name of jesus i declare the discipline to be diligent and the discipline to be responsible i release it upon you now every entitlement mentality that makes you believe someone somewhere should walk and just come and give you free success i cancel that wrong mentality now hallelujah we speak peace over zaria we speak peace over kaduna state and we speak peace over this nation we decree and declare that whether it's in the political or the economic sphere we declare that christ must be glorified in this season in the name of jesus christ and for all of you who are doing one thing or the other whether job whether ministry whatever it is i declare multiplication of results in the name of jesus christ 
before we take the altar call i want to encourage you please listen please listen everyone next week friday next week we're going to have koinonia on sunday is 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 our som graduation we we'll announce that shortly but on friday please listen we are all waiting upon the lord we are fasting okay there's no koinonia so we're going to trust god please when we say wait upon the lord minimum minimum at least minimum four o'clock if you fast and end by 12 except you are a child or except you are on a serious medical this thing if if you are not on a medical program and you fast and end by 12 i think you are lazy to whom much is given much is required six hours alone is too small you have to be serious and if you fast and all you do is sleep god too will have to forgive you because you didn't maximize is this not the fast i have commanded there is a fast that is hunger starvation but there is a genuine fast listen to messages so friday please uh, media make sure you announce it friday we are fasting and we are fasting the goal listen carefully three things number one our spiritual health are we together number two we're interceding for this ministry we're speaking the next level we're declaring we're praying over this ministry are we together now and then the third you can add whatever prayer point but particularly our spiritual lives and then you are praying for the ministry and you know prayer band take note of this and all other departments take note every department should allocate some time at least that you can pray dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon. and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.